Oh, Tom. Welcome. Oh, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm late. I had a little trouble <laughs> logging in here. That's okay. It's a little All right. Yeah, what uh, we're going to do today, just let you know that I was working on this morning, uh, we were going to uh, release uh, a new Active Trader um, uh, interface on the trade page. And uh, we, there's still some bugs, and we had to postpone the uh, wait last night. We had to uh, uh, make the decision not to go through with the release, and it's going to be postponed, I think, until next Wednesday morning. What I have up and running is the uh, QA version of the software. So everybody, well, let's put it this way. If I can actually um, show the software, I'll show you what I'm talking about, because uh, everybody will get the super secret uh, uh, version of the software here. Um, so that's uh, that's what's going on today. So I've been a little bit busy at Digger Swim this morning. But um, what I want to talk today about is what I, I talked for about an hour yesterday at the uh, the advanced class here in Chicago that we had. Mm-hmm. Um, and I covered uh, a topic that a lot, a lot of people have questions about, um, but that isn't, you know, explained really uh, is, is pairs trading. And I know Matthew uh, had... Uh, just that uh, that is a topic, and I think it's a great topic to talk about because there are, I, I, I think there are some opportunities in pairs trading that a lot of people, even a lot of professionals, don't look at. And while you know the other types of techniques, whether it's you know calendar spreads or iron condors or whatever, trading the ETFs, and you know once you get past that, what's the next step? What what are the things do you, can you look for? And pairs trading is a is a great vehicle or a great well, it's not a, I should say it's a great uh, technique or strategy that you can employ. And I've been doing pairs trading for about uh, I'm trying to think when I was back on the board uh, probably about 15 years about 13 or 14 years maybe. Um, and I started when I was trading bond and 30-year bond to 10-year note options at the Board of Trade, um, I started looking, learning a little bit about pairs trading by looking at the note on bond spread, the knob spread. So in other words, the, the, the price 10-year note versus the 30-year bond. And that, you know, fluctuates back and forth and was pretty reliable. Uh, just kind of going, you know, trading in a range, that sort of thing. Sometimes would move out of that range, um, either on the upside or the downside said, okay, well, why did that happen? And this is either the bonds either outperformed or underperformed the, the, um, the 10 years. And so um, I started to stitch together, you know, some, some ideas about how I could make money with that. And that's, that's one of the things that I've done um, pretty well, a lot since then. And then I went, on, went off the floor. I did a lot of pairs trading in futures products. And, and, and it did think or swim. Uh, um, I've done some, still, when I do trade, I... Uh, do some pairs trading still, and um, it's um, I, what I want to do is just go go through some of the things that that you'll look for uh, for pairs trading. And when I talk about pairs trading, I'm talking about P A I R S trading, not P E A R S trading. Mm-hmm. Pairs trading, I suppose, is when you can grow nice uh, pairs somewhere down south and haul them up north uh, during the winter. Um, mm-hmm. But I'll let somebody else cover that topic. Well, you know what I think of our our pairs of stocks or index products. Um, One of the simplest ones and one of the longer term ones is to look at something like, you know, the S&P 500 versus the NASDAQ, you know, and maybe you have a a longer term view that the NASDAQ or uh, will outperform um, the S&P 500. Okay. So what you would do is buy the NASDAQ, buy, let's say, a NASDAQ future, or uh, buy the ID, the, the QQQQ ETF, which is the NASDAQ ETF, essentially, and maybe sell spiders. In other words, sell the S&P 500 ETF. Now, why would you even do that in the first place? Well, in other words, if you thought the um, Qs were going to go up, why, do, wouldn't, why wouldn't you use the Qs? Okay. Well, that's true. If you thought the Qs were going to go up, you just watch them, or you just buy them and, and keep your fingers crossed and they go up. But one of the issues is that you can still, and this is going back, you know, Matthew, I know a lot of the participants 
uh, have attended a lot of the figure swim classes and done some of the, uh, the higher mobility training uh, class with um, with uh, with investors. And pairs trading like those high probability trades get you a chance to make money even if you're wrong. Okay. The idea is, let's say you bought the Q's. Okay, well, let's let's define overperform and underperform for a second. <clears throat> you know, the Q's can go up a greater percentage than the spiders and outperform the spiders, or they can go down less. Okay. So if the spiders drop five percent, but the Q's only drop two percent, you can say, well, okay, the the Q's outperformed the spiders. Of course. They're both down, but they outperformed. Let's flip that. Let's put that scenario then in a down market toward the pairs trade. If I just bought the cues by themselves, and the cues go up, great, I make money. But if they go down two percent, I would lose two percent on the Q trade. Okay, we all understand that. The spider trade then, the short spiders, act as a sort of a hedge, so that. If the cues outperform, either they rise up bigger, in other words, more or faster, or drop less. In other words, the cues go down two percent while the spiders go down five percent. That difference, that pair trade, would make money. So, the rationale for pairs trade is that it, it, it it's the oscillation. This is the thing I want to be able to show you on a chart. The oscillation between the two prices, in other words, just let's say spiders minus Qs or spiders minus, or M and X minus spiders or something like that. You see that difference go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And it's that oscillation, that up, up some, then down some, that, that sort of reversion to a mean that makes pairs trading so appealing. So the idea then is that the pairs trade acts as a sort of a hedge in that, uh, with the oscillation between the prices. And it's that regularity of oscillation that I find very appealing in a trade. Um, to start off, I like to use, I think the easiest way to do pairs trading is using stocks or futures. Um, we'll talk a little bit about options and option spreads in pairs trades. That adds a certain level of difficulty both in determining what to do as far as the trade is, but also execution. And we're gonna, we're gonna go over some execution issues as well. But the idea is that you pick one thing, and on the chart, if everybody, if anybody uh, on the web has access to the software right now, what you do is just go to the charts page. Let's go into the charts page. And you can type in either, um, in the symbol box, you can type in either, SPY minus QQQQ, in other words, SPY minus QQQQ, 